Hello everyone, and today I'm testing out a lens that could be really exciting for people who like wildlife photography or who just want a telephoto zoom lens with a little more power. I'm testing out the new Sigma 100-400mm f5-6.3 to DGOS HSM-C. It's for full frame or APS-C digital SLR cameras or mirrorless cameras if you use an adapter and it's available in the UK for only £800 or in the US for only $750. Another sad example of inflated pricing in the UK but either way it's actually really good value for money, potentially. Clearly, Sigma are seeking to undercut the competition from Canon, Nikon and Sony, whose current 100-400mm lenses are far more expensive. On a full-frame camera, if you're seriously interested in wildlife photography, then 400mm is about the minimum you'll need in a telephoto lens, in my opinion, anyway. Here you can see that zoom range from 100 to 400mm. If you use an APS-C camera, then a crop factor will give you the full frame equivalent of 640mm on Canon cameras. That's fantastic. So they are popular lenses. The payoff with this less expensive Sigma device is that you get a very narrow maximum aperture. F5 at the wide angle end, darkening to f6.3 at telephoto, means that you may need to increase your ISO levels to get snappy shutter speeds. And at f6.3, your camera's autofocus system may not work very efficiently. I know that my mirrorless camera, a Canon EOS M3, had a lot of trouble focusing properly at 400mm with this lens. An important feature for any telephoto lens is image stabilization, and this Sigma lens does have it. Here's some footage with it turned off, and now turned on. This is in stabilization mode 1, and as you can see, it's not very efficient at all, unfortunately, like a few Sigma lenses I've reviewed in the past. It is helping you just a little, maybe you can get about one or two stops of assistance out of it. Stabilization mode 2 was even worse, so that's a bit of a shame. Let's see now about the rest of the lens. For a 100-400mm lens, it's actually more compact than usual, certainly being smaller and lighter than Canon's equivalent lenses, and the Sigma lens is made of plastic, which helps to keep the weight down. You should remember though, that the lens still weighs over a kilogram, so it will take up some space in your camera bag. The filter thread size is 67mm. It's also compatible with Sigma's 1.4x and 2x converters. The body of the lens is based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket around the edge to help keep dust and moisture out. It offers the usual controls on the side for autofocus range and image stabilization. The main control at the front is the zoom ring, which turns evenly and quite smoothly. The focus ring is very nice. It turns smoothly and precisely, and you can adjust focus at any time, even in autofocus mode. So that was helpful when the autofocus didn't work properly on my mirrorless camera. The autofocus motor itself is fairly quick at wider angles and slower at the telephoto end, and it does have a tendency to hunt. It's almost silent though, just making a high-pitched whirring sound. The further good news is that, when it is locked onto your subject, I found that the autofocus tended to be mostly nice and accurate. The lens comes with the usual caps and a nice lens hood, so there you go. I was pleased with this lens's comparatively small size and light weight, but the autofocus system did work a lot better for me through the camera's viewfinder than it did in live view mode, and the stabilization is really poor. I do slightly wonder if the image stabilization wasn't working properly on my copy of the lens. If you own this lens, let me know what you think in the comments. Apparently there are options to tweak its settings if you use the special Sigma USB dock with it, which I don't own. Anyway, image quality. Let's start on a full frame camera, my old Canon 6D. Yes, I know, I need to get a higher resolution camera, times are a little tight at the moment though, and 20 megapixels is good enough for most uses, admittedly. At 100mm and f5, the lens is very sharp, with good contrast and somewhat warm colours from the middle of the image to the edges, and there's just a tiny improvement at f8. 
In the corners, you can spot just a touch of magenta color fringing too, but it's barely noticeable on a 20 megapixel camera. Let's zoom in now to about 250 millimeter. Here, the maximum aperture is now f6.3, so it's darkened quickly. In the middle of the image, we see quite good sharpness, although not quite as biting as at 100 mm. The corners, though, remain very good. Again, there's just the tiniest improvements if you stop down to f8. There seems to be no chromatic aberration at 250 mm, though. And finally, 400 mm. I'm pleased to say that the lens remains very sharp at 400 mm, from the middle of the image to the corners, with no visible chromatic aberration. Great. There's no improvement as you stop down the lens though, you should shoot at f6.3 here if you can. So I'm really impressed with the Sigma lens's image quality. On my Canon 6D, it was very sharp across the entire image frame and the zoom range, with no real problems at all. Well, let's push the lens a bit harder and see how it works on an APS-C camera. In this case, I've adapted it onto my Canon EOS M3 with its demanding 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. At 100 mm and f5, sharpness is very good in the middle of the image, although just a tiny bit of color fringing is visible on contrasting edges. The corners of the image are also quite sharp, although chromatic aberration is a little more visible there. Stop down to f8 for a tiny improvement. Let's see about 250 mm. With the aperture wide open at f6.3, the lens remains nicely sharp, although not bitingly so. The corners, impressively, are the same. But if you stop down to f8, an improvement is quite visible. And finally, 400 mm. At f6.3, the lens is just a tiny bit soft in the middle, and contrast is a tiny bit low, but it's still good enough quality. The corners are a little softer, but not much color fringing is visible. Stop down to f8, and image quality is just a little better. So, on an APS-C camera, the lens seems to be happy enough. It's consistently sharp, but not quite as impressive as more expensive options like the new Canon 100-400mm L Mark II lens. It's a lot sharper than Canon's old Mark I model though, making that older L lens kind of redundant now, in my opinion. Alright then, let's see about vignetting and distortion on a full frame camera. At 100mm, we see just a little pincushion distortion, and at f5, some gentle vignetting in the corners. Stop down to f8, and that darkness goes away. The pincushion distortion remains throughout the zoom range, getting a little more prominent at 400mm. However, vignetting remains quite minimal. Again, stop down to f8 for brighter corners. Now, onto close up image quality. The lens can focus as closely as 1.6 meters. That's a bit further than average for a 100-400 mm lens, but you can still get quite close to your subject. The good news is that, even at close distances, sharpness remains very good. How does this lens work against bright light? Unusually quite well for a telephoto zoom lens. At the widest angles, and even at 400 mm, we see good contrast and not too much flaring. I've seen far worse than this before. And finally, bokeh. Even considering this lens's narrow maximum aperture, at 400mm you can get some very out of focus backgrounds. The quality of the bokeh in those backgrounds is really soft and pleasing in just about every situation, which is great to see. It doesn't make a bad portrait lens, actually, if you don't mind being far away from your subject and shouting your instructions at them. Overall, the Sigma 100-400mm C offers a lot to delight in and good value for money. It's sharp, has low distortion and vignetting, works well against bright lights, has very nice bokeh, and the lens's body is comparatively small and lightweight, something I appreciate. It can't quite render the competition redundant though. Those wishing to spend more money on the new Canon L lens, and that's quite a lot more money, will get far better electronics and image stabilization, a little more sharpness, and a slightly brighter aperture, as well as a much tougher lens body. But anyone wishing to do wildlife photography on a lower budget will get very good results with this pleasing Sigma lens, so it comes recommended.